Hi! In this uh, video we're going to uh, solve linear congruences. That's uh, equations of the type ax is congruent to b modulo n, where a and b are given integers, and the, the modulus n is also an integer and given. Uh, and we want all the integer x so that ax is congruent to b mod n. The first thing we're going to do is to identify when uh, such congruences actually have a solution. And let's just rewrite this statement using the definition of congruence. So this states that uh, the difference b minus ax is a multiple of n. If I reorganize this, I see that uh, ax plus tn equals b. So I want all of these x. Now, a, n, and b are given. So the only unknown variables are x and t. So this is a Diophantine equation in two variables. And I'm only interested in the values of x, not the values of t. I'm just, uh, I have to know that the t exists, but I'm only interested in the x values. So I could solve this as a Diophantine equation, actually. But I'm going to use the techniques we developed in uh, in the last video on modular arithmetic to solve it. Now we know exactly when these Diophantine equations have solutions. The uh, greatest common divisor of the two coefficients here, a and n, has to divide b. So we have a solution to this one if and only if the GCD of a and n actually divides b. So th this is the criterion for solutions to exist. So let's assume that solutions exist and see how we can find them. Working with such uh, congruence, we're allowed to do quite a few things without uh, violating the congruence. So, one of the things we can do is we can replace b by any other number congruent to b modulo n, and we can also replace a by any number congruent to n, uh, congruent to a mod n. And we can multiply on both sides with any integer. We can um, divide through, uh, but then we have to be careful. Uh, because we might have to change the modulus when we divide. So if we have a common factor of all three, a, b, and uh, n, then we can divide all three numbers. If you have um, a common factor of these two, co prime to n, then you can simply divide a and b and keep the modulus. So let's look at examples. That's the best way to, to learn this. Now let's look at this. Uh, this congruence. a is 5, b is 9, and n is 13. So 5 and 13 are co-prime. That means the greatest common divisor is 1 and obviously divides uh, 9. So we have solutions. We just have to find them. Now there are no common factors of these three, no common factors of these two either. So I have to um, to try something else. So what I can do is that I can replace 5 by numbers congruent to 5 mod 13 so that I might be able to divide. Uh, and I'm going to choose uh, to uh, replace 5 by 18. So 18x is congruent 9 mod 13. This gives at least a common factor 2 which is co-prime to 13, so I can divide by, oh, it's give, it gives a common factor 9, actually. 9, which is co-prime to 13, so I can divide through by 9 without changing the modulus. So 2x is congruent 1 mod 13. Now I can replace 1 by 14, because 1 and 14 are congruent mod 13, so 2x is congruent 14 mod 13, 
And then I can divide by 2 to get x congruent 7 mod 13. So that's the solution. All of the integers that solve this congruence uh, are the integers congruent to 7 mod 13. So they are, for instance, 7, 20, uh, let's see, the next one is 33, and so on, 46, so on. You can simply add 13 to these or subtract 13. So you also get the negative ones, minus 6, minus 19, and so on. So all of these solve them. But it's uh, better to just state this, but because that sums up all of the solutions. Let's look at this congruence. In this case, 6 and 9 has 3 as their greatest common divisor. And 3 does not divide 7. So in this case, you have no solutions. I'm going to solve this congruence. If um, we look at the greatest common divisor of 35 and 42, that is 7. And 7 divides 14, so I can divide through by 7, giving 5x congruent 2 mod 6. Now, I can try to uh, multiply these numbers by an integer so that the coefficient is congruent 1 mod 6 because then I can simply replace the, con uh, the coefficient by 1 and that solves the congruence. So if I multiply by 5 I get 25x is congruent 10 mod 6 and 25 is congruent 1 it's 1 more than 24 which is a multiple of 6 so this is actually congruent x so x is congruent 10 mod 6 uh, 10 is congruent 4 mod 6, so it's easier to write x congruent 4 mod 6. 